Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. In Greece, the debate continues on the Greek left about what to offer up to the Greek people. What solutions can the left present? And what politics should the left be uniting around? Now joining, to talk, joining us to talk about all this and recently returned from Greece is Leo Panitch. He's a Canadian research chair in comparative political economy and a distinguished research professor of political science at York University in Toronto. He's the author of a, a book that's just hitting the shelves and now and, and soon in the United States, and I think it's already out in Canada, is it, in the UK? At any rate, it's called The Making of Global Capitalism, and he's an often contributor to the Real News Network. Thanks, Leo, for joining us. Hi, Paul. Glad to be here. So, uh, Talk a bit about your recent visit to, to Greece. You, you were there during an important debate that was going on. What did you observe? Well, I uh, was lucky enough uh, to be there uh, just in time for the launching of Syriza's program. Syriza is the coalition of left-wing social movements and parties, uh, which uh, has existed now for a decade. Uh, but uh, made an enormous breakthrough in the run-up to the election uh, and came to the verge of entering the state and forming a government uh, in the second election. And I was fortunate to be able to actually be there when they launched their program, uh, to have a fly-on-the-wall observer status at the meeting of the Strategy and Policy Committee uh, which was putting the last uh, dots on the I's and crossing the T's on that program right. a few days before uh, and spending a lot of time talking to uh, some of the leadership and activists so, so uh, one of the, one the party. Of the, so it was fascinating. One of the hot debates there, I would assume, was the, the attitude towards staying or leaving the Eurozone. Uh, some people suggesting that you can't really solve this crisis within the Eurozone, that all one can have is more austerity. And uh, others saying Greece can't afford to leave the Eurozone. Uh, so uh, was that at least one of the big debates? And how did that play out? No, not so much. I mean, it was a debate perhaps between Syriza and the parties to the far left of it, uh, which uh, got a infinitesimal portion of the vote. Uh, Syriza is uh, quite committed to staying in Europe, uh, but what they're committed to and why they've secured such support uh, is that they can't uh, expect to be uh, carrying the brunt. The Greek people can't be expected to be carrying the brunt of the fundamental imbalances of a capitalist Europe. Uh, so their position is that the memorandum of agreement uh, which first the, the Social Democratic government signed on to, and then the Conservative government signed on to, which involves enormous austerity and structural adjustment uh, to be borne primarily by Greek uh, working people and small businesses and, and public servants, uh, that, that that would uh, not be implemented by a government of the left. But was, was there, was there not some debate about what next? Because the... Uh, well, they, they, you know, their position is that uh, uh, they will stick to this and that it's not e easy for any government to be any country to be thrown out of the euro. Now you can say, and I take that position myself, that they're trying to have it both ways. But their position is that there's no reason for them to take the initiative, uh, that uh, what they're demanding is what's right for most European people. Uh, and that includes, in their program, uh, socializing the banks. Uh, that is, nationalizing them and then socializing them, making them democratized and part of a system of democratic economic planning. That's not a new position. That's been a position of party from the beginning, but now it's extremely relevant. Uh, now, you know, it's true that, that it's very likely, of course, given that we're, they're dealing with the Europe they are, uh, that what they're demanding would not be agreed to. That isn't to say that it would be at all easy to figure out a constitutional way of uh, expelling a member uh, from the Eurozone, uh, even more so from uh, the European Union. Uh, so it would be a long and very messy affair were they to do it. Uh, were it to happen, uh, there is no question that the Greek people would suffer uh, that way as well. 
they're suffering under the terrible imposition of cutbacks uh, at the insistence of the so-called Troika. Uh, primarily, Germany is, is much more insistent than the United States or the IMF. Uh, Germany is insisting on this, as everyone knows. Uh, but they're hoping uh, that whether they're pushed out or not pushed out, uh, that there will be support that would come from a shift in the balance of forces inside Europe. Right. And we have to be realistic and realize that if they do get pushed out of uh, the, the Eurozone, uh, the people will suffer as well. I mean, Greece uh, has to import oil. It has to import most of its manufacturing. And one of the reasons, of course, for that is that joining a free trade zone, uh, many countries know this well, resulted in 100,000 manufacturing jobs being lost. Uh, since Greek entered the Economic and Monetary Union. Uh, so they have to import a lot of stuff, and if they devalue, which would, of course, give them a respite, it also means that they'd have to find a means of paying for this. We're back, in a sense, to 1917, Paul. Uh, you know, at the time of the Russian Revolution, it was the weakest link, and the people who made that revolution said, we're only going to be able to go so far, and, and the Russian people won't suffer too much, if there is a break in that link in the chain that leads to revolutions in the more developed capitalist countries. It didn't, uh, and, and uh, therefore the situation got very difficult. And uh, you know, for the Greeks to break, they would need a shift in the balance of forces that would provide space uh, for the Greeks to be able to negotiate a different economic strategy. And if they did, they'd providing a, be providing a model uh, for the rest of Europe and indeed for perhaps a great, the rest of the world. I kept feeling when I was there that we think of Greece as the cradle of democracy. Well, maybe we can think of Greece as the cradle of a democratic socialism for the 21st century. And what do you make of the argument some people are giving that the Greek people are going to go through hell no matter what better to go through hell outside the Eurozone, take advantage of being in control of your own currency, uh, and, and, and rebuild along some of the lines you were talking about, uh, Syriza suggests, nationalization of the banks and, and, and such. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's fine. I think one has to have a political strategy. Uh, one of the people you constantly and rightly have on, and I think I introduced you to, Kostas Lapovitsas, uh, has been arguing, and I felt rightly for over a year or two, uh, that, uh, and probably should have been done right at the beginning, uh, that Greece should simply have defaulted on this debt that was imposed upon it. Uh, that involved getting pushed out fine. But you need to realize as well that Lipovatsis did not have and does not have on his own a political strategy. He strongly supported uh, Syriza, which committed itself to trying to stay in the euro. Uh, uh, because that was the only political strategy. People in Greece are not prepared to leave. Uh, they, w uh, they would like the, the memorandums withdrawn. They would like a very, very different policy. Uh, they want a government that is with the people. And I must say, one of the things that's most impressive, and I think that's most impressive to people, is that uh, Syriza has been in the streets. Uh, it is not simply taking advantage of the enormous uh, dissent and protests and demonstrations, general strikes. It has been in amongst the people. And, and why they managed to capture the popular imagination the way they did uh, was to say, we're just not trying to do better as a left party. We are trying to form a left government. We feel it would be irresponsible to allow the situation to continue and just do better in the polls. Uh, irresponsible to allow the suffering to continue. And as soon as Cipra said that, and I must say, I discovered when I was there, when he said it, he said it, by the way, in an internet interview, something like this one, uh, the, some of the rest of the leadership and many activists were astonished. What's he talking about? You know, we've been at five, six, seven, eight, maybe we'll get 10, 11 percent of the vote. How can he be claiming we're going to lead a left government? But as soon as he said it, people flocked to him and to, and to Syriza because they were looking for that type of confident lead. 
So what's, what's next in, in terms of where Syriza goes? What else emerged in, in, at the, uh, the conference you were at? Well, uh, I wasn't at a conference. I, I was there actually invited by a coalition of far left organizations who got you know, one percent of the vote or less, uh, and and uh, who look upon Syriza as a moderate reformist party. I think they're wrong. Uh, uh, and I was there to you know interview and see former friends and students who were very active in Syriza and indeed in the reforming it. And, and uh, what's going on and, uh, is very exciting uh, and very important. Uh, the expectation is that this government won't last, uh, won't last six months. Uh, there is a modicum of relief uh, that they came so close to winning but didn't win because, heaven knows, they weren't ready to take over the state. Uh, they didn't know who would be the ministers. They didn't know where they would get the talent to bring in 10,000 people into the state. And they were worried that if they did, that they would denude the movement of many of its activists. Uh, they are very committed to be, uh, even if they get into government, uh, to be the kind of government that is still mobilizing people, uh, still developing people's capacities to organize. Uh, still connected to the mass movement. And uh, they, in fact, and one of my closest friends who often writes for the Socialist Register, uh, uh, I think you've had him on The Real News, Michael Spurdelakis, is on the new commission that's been formed to write a new constitution for the series of party. Uh, so they're hard at work in, in trying to implement a new type of relationship between movements, parties, and the state. And if, the, if this government doesn't last six months, uh, what's the polling look like? Does Syriza have a shot of forming a government then? Oh, and absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, it, it is very likely to do so. Uh, you know, they, they got upward of 30% of the vote. And uh, uh, the, the collapse of the SOC, uh, the Social Democratic Party, was massive. Uh, so yes, I, I think that uh, you know it, it's extremely likely that that, that would happen, and hopefully they'll be uh, uh, more prepared than they would have been in June. Although, had they been uh, brought into the state, they would have entered it with the kind of purpose that I the game. Right. Thanks very much for joining us, Leo. It's really good to talk to you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. And don't forget the, the donate button, which is up here or down there, because if you don't click on that, uh, we can't do this.